Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I am marking the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 launch with the help of a special new pencil I just got. There's an artist here on YouTube named Leonardo Perez Nieto. If you have not seen his videos, I'll have a link to that in the description. He invented this mechanical pencil, and I've seen a couple of videos of him talking about it, and it looked really fascinating to me. It's got three leads, and they're different weights, and you can change the leads just by clicking the pencil button somehow. So I bought one, and here is the unboxing. The first box that I got, by the way, was empty, so they were very kind. They had good customer service and took care of re replacing it, sending it another one to me. And it's got this little brochure that tells you how to use the pencil, but here it is. It's got a nice weight to it. They say I think it's made of brass on the inside. It's got a nice grip on it, a non-slip grip. Mine came with a couple of different pencil leads, including a blue one. If you know anybody who does drafting, they'll know why a blue pencil is helpful. Extra erasers, which are actually under that silver cap on the back of the pen pencil that you'll see in a few minutes. And a pokey thing, which I assume is for when you start having to replace leads, which I haven't had to do yet. Press that silver button and the end pops out and you turn it so that whichever lead you want to use, that number is facing upward. Then gravity makes that lead drop out of the end so that you can use it. I was just blown away by this. It was amazing. I did have to click it a few more times, which is if you're using mechanical pencils, you know you're constantly advancing it. So that is what you'll see me doing here in throughout this video. Press the button again, and now the 0 0.5 is facing upward, and I press the button, and the 0.5 lead is the one that drops out of the end of it. Holy guacamole, right? Isn't that like magic? So yeah, turn it again to the 0.7, and you get a 0.7 millimeter lead. I can go out sketching and not have to carry three pencils with me now, which is kind of an exciting thing. So very, very thrilled with Leonardo's little invention here that he has put together called the Tuto 3. And I'm going to use it for two projects. One is going to be this full sketch. That starts about eight and a half minutes if you want to fast forward to that. It doesn't have any voiceover. It just has weird space music. So you can enjoy that. But I'm going to do a card first. because I have card makers and fine artists who watch my videos. So I'm going to do a card first with three different little... Polaroids on here. This is the picture this die set from Ellen Hudson that I'm tracing the die cuts to create these little shapes that I'm going to stamp some images in from my favorite things because I am traveling right now to teach at my favorite things and I thought it'd be fun to use one of their stamp sets. This is an older one but I needed space dudes so I'm going to wipe off the face of this one because I wanted to use the learning that I had from doing the large Apollo 11 sketch to create some interesting reflections on the glass on that little space dude. So I stamped also the moon and then this little rocket ship into the different squares that I had created. And I stamped them in a gray ink because I was going to be using pencil to do this and make them look like I had sketched them all entirely. You could also just stamp them in regular black ink and color them with whatever you want and add the frames on there. There's also a bunch of companies that have different frame dies like this, like Polaroid frame dies. I believe MFT has one. If I find a whole bunch of them, I'm going to put them as links in the supply list, both on my blog and in the description down below. But you'll see me throughout this and the, the big sketch clicking the pencil kind of constantly. A lot of it is just advancing that pencil lead, and then a lot of it is switching from one lead to another because on something like this rocket ship, I can do a lighter gray right around the rocket and the darker color outside of that, so it makes it look like there's a glow coming off of the rocket itself and create some interesting highlights and shadows and things in the glass. And then when I get to the center portion, I can decide whether I want to follow what the stamp lines have or whether I want to create something more interesting. And here I decided to go with the stamped shapes because there's these little kind of horizontal stripes 
And then I created a glow around it by having the outside edges of my rocket ship in white and then the shadow portion in a very light shadow down the center. Just makes this whole thing look like it's glowing. And you can change up any details that you want on this as you're working with it. The pencil lead is nice and small so you can get lots of little details in there. Now, if you have not seen Leonardo's YouTube channel, it's called Fine Art Tips and I will have a link to it in the doobly-doo, as I said. His videos are, for someone like me, really great because he calls them tutorials. But they're not real like step-by-step -step tutorials, even though, even though he says they're step-by-step. -step. They're like those memes where it shows somebody drawing like one circle for a head of an animal and then one circle for the body and then, you know, two points for the eyes. And then step four is like a full completed drawing. There's a whole bunch of steps missing in there. Some of his videos can feel like that if you're not somebody who already has an understanding of art. So don't get frustrated if that happens. But he has things like a whole video just about drawing a water drop, and he talks about the light reflecting through water. And it's really helpful for me to just hear somebody talk about that in a really simple kind of a way and not get into a huge science thing but have an artist talk about it and show me how they're drawing it. And then I can apply that in other projects that I'm doing. So you may or may not find his stuff helpful to you. Card makers may find it interesting or may not. I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think of his videos. Anyway, here I'm adding some of those shapes that I learned to draw from doing the big sketch. And there's a, a lunar module thing that's reflecting in the photograph that I was working from. And you'll watch that develop in the large sketch because there's actually two people in that scene. There's the shadow of the person taking this photograph. And then there's a person standing out in the distance too, like a little white, per white silhouette of a person. It was really fascinating to analyze those, those shapes. I had to blow the photograph up really big so I could really see what was going on. It was quite, quite fascinating. And I will have a link in on my blog to the actual photo that I was working from so you can actually look at that yourself and maybe even use it to make your own Apollo 11 sketch because we are going to be uh, kind of watching all kinds of Apollo 11 news coming up for the next month. The date that this video is going up I believe is a month before the anniversary. So I decided once I had added all of my little frames onto the card, those are glued on now, to add some other details. A little grid very lightly in the background, and then I stamped the stars from the stamp set, added the have a blast sentiment on it, and then decided to add some shadows underneath of each one of the, the little Polaroids to just give them some visual depth as well as the physical. So there is my fun little card popped onto a black card base. And I'm gonna just kind of turn this over now to the completion of the sketch. And you're welcome to click through on the links in the doobly-doo and I will see you guys again next time.